Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, module of Principles of Pharmacotherapy, Chapter 3. So in this chapter, we will be uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics interactions involving drug food, drug herb, drug disease, and drug laboratory value interactions. So drug food interactions uh, may, may also involve pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics in which in pharmacokinetics, uh, the presence of certain food affects drug absorption or metabolism. And in pharmacodynamic interaction, the presence of food affects drug response. So in pharmacokinetics uh, interaction involving the absorption, uh, some food might delay gastric emptying time in which uh, the drug might be absorbed more slowly in the presence of food. So it might not be prefer preferable for drugs that need immediate action, for example, analgesics. So, but uh, in some cases, it may be preferable to maintain blood concentration throughout the interval uh, if the drug is taken with uh, food. And drugs that may irritate the GI mucosa, for example, and say it's or aspirin should be given with food to reduce absorption and in that way it will delay or it will reduce the irritation to the stomach. And this traction causing the de delaying in drug absorption may or may not affect bioavailability. Another mechanism is through chelation in which some dietary components might contain cations, for example, calcium, magnesium, aluminium or ferrous. For example, tetracycline uh, given together with milk might form insoluble chelates and might reduce absorption and bioavailability of tetracycline. And also citrofloxacin given together with milk or yogurt or cal calcium fortified drinks might reduce the absorption of uh, citrofloxacin. And also tannins in tea or coffee might form complex with uh, ferrous so those who are taking ferrous supplement uh, should not take uh, the supplement together with tea or coffee. Food content might also affect drug absorption in which high-fat meals increases the absorption of lipophilic drugs, while food with uh, high fiber might decrease the absorption of digoxin or, uh, or antidepressants or statins. So in this condition, we might suggest the patient to take the drug uh, one hour before or two hours after food. Paracetamol and uh, pectin or fiber, it might delay the absorption and onset of paracetamol. So in terms of uh, metabolism interaction, grapefruit juice is the one of the most common uh, food that might inhibit drug, uh, drug metabolizing enzyme which is C3A4 in the intestine. So in the intake of this juice together with drugs that are substrate to C3A4 will increase the bioavailability of these drugs. So a single glass of grapefruit juice might cause uh, C3A4 inhibition for 24 to 48 hours. And uh, if the patient is regularly taking this grapefruit juice, it might continuously inhibit the, uh, enzyme, in, uh, the enzyme activity. So there will be uh, an increase in serum level of certain drugs. Uh, on the other hand, um, some vegetables like Brussels sprout, cabbage, and broccoli um, might induce CYP1A. So in terms of pharmacodynamic interactions, we might expect some interaction with uh, vegetables that contain high vitamin K uh, with anticoagulants, in which uh, the vitamin K might reduce the effect of anticoagulants. So patients need to be advised to take the same amount of uh, vegetables containing high level of vitamin K daily. Otherwise, it will be changes in the effect of uh, anticoagulant itself. So caffeinated beverages like tea, coffee, or soft drink are stim CNS stimulants, so it might affect or reduce the sedative effect of uh, sedative drugs or hypnotic. Dilsofiram-like reaction might occur if the patient is taking mal inhibitors like phenylazine together with tyramine containing food, for example, cheese, ripe bananas, yogurt, salami, and it might cause hypertensive crisis. Drugs causing disulfiram-like reaction uh, include uh, metronidazole, cephalosporin, or chrysiofubin. So if these drugs are taken together with alcohol, it might also cause nausea, uh, stomach, 
vomiting. Next is uh, drug herb interactions in which um, concurrent intake of herbs might affect drug metabolism and also uh, it might affect drug pharmacological action. So in terms of the metabolism interaction, St. John's wort, uh, which is traditionally used to treat depression, is a potent inducer of CYP3A4. So therefore, it will increase the metabolism of drugs substrate to CYP3A4. And ginseng, uh, which is traditionally used to uh, increase vitality and improve body resistance, it will induce metabolic enzymes uh, like CYP3A4. 1A4, CYP2C9, and CYP3A4. Therefore, the metabolism of warfarin, um, which is a substrate to these uh, enzymes, will increase. In this way, it will reduce the anticoagulant effect of warfarin. So, other drugs that can alter uh, metabolic enzymes like uh, Echinacea or Ginkgo biloba. So in terms of the pharmacodynamics interaction, some herbs might exert uh, pharmacological actions like uh, exam for example, alfalfa, donkwai or horse chestnut. It contains coumarin-like constituents so it will exert uh, antiplatelet or anticoagulant activity. So other examples include Asian ginseng which have hypoglycemic effect, hawthorn uh, having hypotensive effect and even in primrose oil, which might cause a lower seizure threshold. Drug disease interaction, so it occurs when a medication might cause a poten might pot so it occurs when a medication can potentially um, worsen a pre-existing medical problem to the patient. For example. In elderly patients with multiple chronic diseases, uh, they might have a lot of uh, drugs, drugs at which uh, they, they, they are prone for interaction with these uh, drugs. So elderly patients with multiple chronic diseases, uh, they certainly have a lot of medications to take in which they, uh, they are at high risk of having this type of interaction. So certain drugs may blunt uh, the typical sign symptoms of existing uh, diseases. So some of the diseases that might uh, cause a drug interaction includes renal insufficiency or impairment. So uh, we can expect that those with renal impairment have impaired uh, renal drug metabolism and clearance. So some drugs might also affect or uh, worsen kidney condition, for example, ACE inhibitors. So it will further reduce TFR. Acetazolamide uh, might also exacerbate acidosis in patients with renal impairment. So second is thyroid disorders in which um, uncontrolled hypothyroidism will, will decrease the rate of drug metabolism. Uh, for example, it will increase the sensitivity to CNS depression. Cardiovascular diseases like hypertension uh, it might also have interaction with NSAIDs in which NSAIDs may cause fluid retention and it will increase in BP. So, and said use will uh, worsen the uh, hypertension. And steroids may also increase BP by expanding the volume of uh, blood. And in heart failure, if the beta blockers and calcium channel broker might exacerbate the condition. So we want to avoid uh, giving these drugs if the patient's having cardiovascular diseases like, uh, like these examples. Uh, fourth is diabetes mellitus, in which beta blocker use may mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia. So we cannot see whether, whether the patient is having hypoglycemia or not, so it will be dangerous for some patients. Antidepressants may alter glucose uh, homeostasis and might promote weight gain. So beware uh, if your patient is having diabetes or uh, obese. We might want to choose uh, certain uh, antidepressants which do not have this. Hepatic dysfunction is when uh, liver diseases that, uh, can affect drug metabolism and biliary excretion, but uh, and for long use of hypnotics may cause drug accumulation, and also uh, morphine might also uh, have a, a risk of accumulation and overdose. For respiratory disease, for asthma patients, beta blocker might worsen asthma conditions. Uh, so lastly is the drug laboratory value interactions in which some drugs may cause interference in the lab. 
So for physical effects, uh, drugs may interfere with colorimetric or fluorimetric analysis. For example, nitrofurantoin, uh, met metronidazole or nitrates can cause a dark yellow-brown colored urine. Where else? Rifampicin, warfarin, doxorubicin might cause orange-red urine. So you have to counsel your patients. So if they're using these uh, drugs for the first time, you need to uh, alert the patients that they might expect uh, the change. They might expect changes in the color of the urine. So drugs may interfere with the measurement of analyte. Um, might be because they have similar structure with uh, certain analytes. For example, serum potassium is increased by the concurrent administration of IV penicillin G because IV penicillin also contains uh, uh, some moles of uh, potassium. So for, so for patients given IV penicillin, you have to monitor serum potassium as well. Pharmacological effects uh, in which drugs may cause fluid and electrolyte imbalances uh, in which uh, it might, in which uh, in which monitoring for the lab values are needed. For example, thiazide diuretics uh, or high dose glucocorticoid might reduce potassium level. Diuretics and estrogen might, might increase blood glucose level or acetazolamide or levodopa might, re, might raise serum uric acid level. So patients given this type of medications, you need to monitor for the lab values accordingly. So what are the clinical significance? Are all these uh, interactions are significant? Of course not. Um, again, drugs with narrow therapeutic index are often implicated and some drugs show interaction effects in some patients but not in others. Uh, so one of the ways to alert the healthcare providers is through a computerized drug interaction program as a screening tool. But we have to use it as a screening tool only because not all patients might experience that uh, interaction effect. Evaluate drug interaction a risk of a patient uh, specific on a patient specific basis, and consider the age, medical history, concurrent medication use of herbal or uh, concurrent medication use or use of herbal or alternative medicine as the parameter or the predictors for you to. Uh, for you to monitor closely the patients on the risk of interaction. General recommendation uh, for drug interactions uh, involving food or herb, uh, for drug interactions uh, involving absorption, allow an interval of two to three hours between administration to avoid any changes in the drug absorption. Alter the dose of one of the interacting drugs if, if the interaction is um, involving the metabolism. So reduce the dose of the drug, which is likely to have an enhanced effect, followed by monitoring. And on the other hand, for drugs which is likely to be to have reduced effect, monitor for therapeutic failure and increase the dose if necessary. So switching one of the potential interacting drugs with an alternative or for herbs or for, or for use of herbs, um, you might advise the patient to stop the use of the herbs if it, uh, if it is causing an, a significant interaction with the drugs. Advise the patient to seek guidance about the medication if they plan to stop smoking or start a hormone remedy. And so close monitoring of uh, drug efficacy and side effects is very important too. So for the conclusion, drug interaction not only involves drug, drug interaction but also drug food, drug herb, drug disease, and drug lab test interactions. And uh, all the interactions need to be assessed for the risk uh, uh, and clinical effects and the significance for the patient's therapy. So the patients also need to be counseled accordingly in which um, uh, they should know which food or which herbs that might interact and might uh, interfere with the drug therapy. Uh, with the drug therapy. And close monitoring should be performed, uh, especially for high-risk patients. So that's all. These are the references. Thank you very much.